We're doing a method today. We're doing systems of systems of simultaneous equations. A system of equations means we're not just looking at one equation. We're looking at a whole system of equations. And we're going to learn a method of solving these systems using something called substitution. And here's how it goes. So first off, here's the system. Negative x plus y equals negative 5. 2x minus 5y equals 1. When I say a system, if I would have, for example, y equals 6 and x equals 1, so negative 1 plus 6, oops, oops I'm sorry, um, I didn't see that negative there. If I would have x equals negative 1 and y equals negative 6, so negative negative 1 is positive 1 plus negative 6 equals negative 5, and that would solve the top equation. But th those same two numbers would not solve the bottom equation. In order to be a solution of the system, I need an x and y that solve both equations. That's what that's what a system is all about. And we're going to do a method called substitution. And uh, I, I have it as a three-set method. And I'm just going to say solve in one, sub in the other, and follow through. I'm going to explain exactly what that means. So first, you're going to solve for one variable in one equation. It doesn't matter which variable. It doesn't matter which equation. Just pick whatever is easy for you. For me, solving for y in the top equation seems the easiest. So I just bring the x over to the other side, and I get y equals x minus 5. That's step one. So solve for y. Solve for one variable in one equation. Now step two, substitute y in the other equation. Now again, I picked y in equation one. I could have picked x. I could have picked, you know, whatever. This is how I did it. Anyway, once I have the y, I substitute it. See here it says 2x minus 5y. So where it would have been a y, I substituted this over here, x minus 5. Why did I do that? Because now I have an equation with just one variable. I know how to solve that. So that becomes 2x minus 5. Now I'm distributing the 5. Uh, 5x plus 25 equals 1. And I very easily solve that. x equals 8. So step 1 was to solve for y. Step 2 was to substitute that y into the other equation. I solved for one variable in one equation. I substituted that into the other equation. And now for the follow-through, and the follow-through means back-sub and check, because the hardest part is getting the first solution. Now I'm going to back-substitute. Once I have x, equal, once I have y, x equals 5, so y, which is equal to, y was equal to x minus 5, so now y is equal to 8 minus 5, which is 3. y equals 3. So now I have x equals 8, y equals 3. I solved the problem, and the final thing is really just to check the solution, so I'm putting these. So here's my two original equations. And I'm just plugging in x and y. x is 8, y is 3. So negative 8 plus 3 equals negative 5. Check. Uh, 2 times 8 minus 5 times 3 is 16 minus 15 equals 1. Check. Everything worked out. So I solved for one variable and one equation. I substituted that variable into the other equation. And then I followed through by back substituting and checking. In other words, I'm checking that the solution works not just in one equation, but works in both equations, because the system means we need a solution that works in both. Now, this means graphically, by the way, if I were to graph these two equations, so one line would look like this, the other line would look like that. By the way, I have it going, it doesn't actually go through the origin, it goes close to the origin, but not through. Um, anyway, it means that these two lines, this would be, this is the, that's the first equation, that happens to be the second equation, these are the two lines. Those two lines would intersect at the point 8, 3. That's what the solution winds up meaning graphically, that 8, 3 would be, the, would be the intersection of these of graphing the top line and graphing the bottom line. And that's a, that's a fact in general for these kind of, these kind of uh, systems of equations, and I'm out.